My name is Ray Howard, and I raised my family in the same house as my grandparents, two of the early black pioneers to Helena, in the family home on the corner of North Idaho and 9th Avenue. I learned from my elders that in the early days of the Montana Territory, the African Americans were treated fairly well. There weren't many of us, and those blended right into the population through mining, freight, or whatever they were doing. But in subsequent decades, racism thrived. Lessons on being black in Montana came fast and were hard learned. Throughout my youth in the 30s and 40s, I and my family were turned away from restaurants. Blacks faced tougher discrimination problems than Indians. We were excluded from nearly every restaurant in town and held low paying jobs. And you better not go into that bar to drink. Barbers wouldn't cut a black man's hair. So we had to wait for a traveling barber. Classmates used the N word when addressing me at recess. From a young age, we were taught by our elders how to walk in both the white world and black world. When confronted with racism I encountered at school, on the town or in the streets, I learned to think that it wasn't malicious, but rather it was guided by ignorance. The best response I learned was to ignore it or politely say we didn't appreciate it. After the early pioneers of the 1860s, our society was pretty egalitarian, but at the time I was born in the mid-1930s, Helena began to reflect an enduring system of racism. By high school, I'd blossomed into a six-foot, six basketball star and stand-up student. This is what they said about me in the Butte newspaper. It looks like Helena has great promise with a very slender Negro boy, Ray Howard. But if I was just a skinny black kid with a talent for basketball within Helena's remaining black community, I was still a model young man and a source of great pride to my family. I went to the U of M and there became one of what they called the fabulous Frosch team of 1953. I graduated with a degree in education. I returned to Helena and tried to get a job teaching in my hometown. But the Helena School District would refuse me a teaching job, saying white parents wouldn't appreciate a Negro lecturing their kids. So I went on to get my master's and Ph.D. and taught at the Canadian College. But even so, when I retired in 1990, I moved back to my hometown, stayed for the rest of my life, and died here in 2013. My departure marked the end of an era. I was the last of the descendants of Clarissa and James Crump to be raised in the Ninth Avenue home. I left an African-American family legacy in the form of descendants scattered in towns across the West, but especially Helena, my family's home for some 150 years. 